Never let it be said that I come to you in any spirit other than accuracy and, and, and the utmost haste. Today I am reviewing the D Car One 8026. Another numerically named pen, that which I really struggle to remember. 8026. That's the number, that's the name. That's how they've chosen to designate this pen. Enormous. Enormous. Well, not enormous, but crikey. Large, I'd say. There it is up against a Sailor King of pens, for example. The dimensions are 141 millimeters, capped, as you see it now. 122 millimeters, a much more manageable length. Uncapped, as you see it now. And an unwieldy, but certainly imposing, 166 millimeters posted, according to my careful measurements. Now I'm doing this review quite quickly because apparently everyone in the nearby vicinity is getting as much construction work done as they possibly can. I was in a rush to do this review and unfortunately one of the things that potentially would have held me up, noise, bugger it, you can hear me right? This is a set of scales which would ordinarily be used by much more disreputable people I'd have thought than me, but it's not very reliable, so I wouldn't recommend this to them. So that goes in the bin. I want to bring you the most accurate information I possibly can. The Decar Wen 38026. God, you see, you just can't remember. I've been staring and at and using this pen for weeks now, and I cannot commit these digits to memory. I can barely remember my phone number. Just about can. Maybe not everyone suffers like this. Now, in order to bring you the news that the Decar Wern, oh Christ, 8026 is 53.5 grams in weight. How on earth have I done that without the aid of a scales? Well, in case you find yourself enduring a similar nightmare at some point in the future, let me recommend this method to you. What I've done here with a startlingly productive use of my time and attention is rig up a tube which I've sellotaped to a disappointing notebook to keep it stable. I've then made excellent use of adhesive magnets which adhere to the very center of your IKEA cork coasters because they have lovely, convenient, concentric circles. So you can get your magnet right in the middle. Balance your ruler on your cardboard tube and then whatever currency you can be bothered to look up the weight for on the internet. And you will discover the startling news that each of these coins has a specific weight. The Decar Wern balances at two two pound coins, three one pound coins and one 5p coin from the UK, dutifully scribed out, 53.5 grams. It's not actually an uncomfortable weight, I'd say. An awful lot of the weight is in this cap. The balance is, is actually excellent, unposted. Writing posted. The balance of the pen surprisingly works quite well for short periods. There's a lot of interesting textures on the DK1 8026. On the shaft of the pen, mottled, granular substance. I've seen it described in various places, not that this pen is talked about much. The scrub finish. Think of those little sponges that you use to clean your dishes with if you're still keeping up such standards. Buzzy, fuzzy texture. I've seen it described as black frosted. Black frosted is a lovely cake-like description. You know when icing, soft icing, develops a kind of a crust when it's been left to uh, to, I suppose, oxidise? It's probably what things get up to in the open air. Oxidised icing. That slightly granular texture. So scrub or frosted black finish on the shaft of the pen, which is absolutely uniform in diameter until you hit the lower finial, where you have this protrusion of smoothly domed brass. The other lovely texture is barley corn. If you own a copy of Fairchild's Dictionary of Textiles, which I assume most sensible people do, a class of small figured basket weaves with a geometric appearance, the warp of filling distributed regularly. 
The ground weave binds the warp and filling firmly without affecting the appearance of the basket weave. It's a barley corn texture, this. So I hear. Which gives you some much needed grip because it's a friction fit cap. More textures. On the section, we have a metal section. Not immediately apparent because it's painted or lacquered or something. It's ridged. These ridges do not describe a grip specification. If you're holding your pen at a conventional-ish angle, if you're not careening off to the side, you won't find this business on the section to be too domineering. It's there because metal sections can occasionally get a little drenched and slippery from your from your nubbly little fingers seizing them the feed is, is a smooth feed scroll work on the clip what i was hoping was going to be a pair of dragon's nostrils but i think it's just more scroll work with brush like moustache at the bottom and considering it's such a slim line clip with very little of that irritating con cavity underneath strong it's very, very tense. Ooh. Tried to figure out a way I could talk about the tension of clips on fountain pens. Class one lever, the effort is placed at the top. See, I'm, I'm not a physicist. This is very much improvised. But here I've drawn a little pen. A classic class one would be the Lamy 2000. Like a hungry hippo. Class two, the fulcrum up at the other end. And this is a classic. Class two, definitely confident in this clip. Look at that, look at that. I'm yanking away at that. Very difficult, but not too difficult. Impressive. It's got a lovely little crown or hat. I guess these crowns denote a certain sort of occasion pen. Signing things or gifts that come along at important moments. Just how far some people go with their pursuit of occasion pens. This is a golden dragon fountain pen with an with a even more ostentatious crown on it, which I can see with its 1.1 millimeter nib creating quite the sense of occasion. This is your more multi-purpose, important business person who's scurrying around, signing this, that and the other on an almost continuous basis. Something like that, maybe. Maybe. It's got one of those excellent filling systems that just no trouble whatsoever, instantaneous suction into the cartridge converter, metal on metal threads, drawing the section into the shaft and holding it securely. That's not too much rattle in my book. Just to give you a basis for comparison with another crown topped pen, the Jin Hao 500. Much more rattly, squeaking less reassuring metal threads. The DK1 does a really smooth and noble job. DK1 is a really difficult brand to tell you much about because there's very little information published online. It's one of those mysterious Chinese pen manufacturers who issue websites, as far as I can tell, and like to keep things very pokey and bizarre, clustering in little corners of shopping websites. If you wanted a list of obscure things to type into Google to really test it to the nines, the Decal One 8026 might be one of your, might be on your list of search terms. You also discover just how cynical and mad online money-making can be. If you scrutinize the search results, you'll see somebody's created an entire Pinterest page full of the word, the word, the word, affiliate links. A bedazzling, scaled array of every single decal one you could possibly conceive in all of the remarkable color combinations that this manufacturer likes to, and textures that this manufacturer likes to pump out there. A huge tapestry of, of affiliate links, presumably each generating almost nothing, but produced at such scale. Well, it probably, probably keeps somebody in extraordinary style. And good luck to them if they can be asked to implement something as dire and soul-destroying as that. On to the writing sample. D. Ka. Wen. The Chinese characters for this brand name are D. 
and I apologize to anybody who has more effective ways of writing Chinese characters and more in line with the the way these things are taught in schools. I do my best, you know. Di Ka Wen, which trust, translates decathlon, the number five nib, which comes emblazoned with the words genius iridium, rather mystifying, has a really good flow on it. I should add that the ink I'm using is diamine oxblood, which I'm rather obsessed with at times, which seems appropriate to a pen that's designed for contracts and documents negotiated with fury, sentiment, emotion, and, and, and livelihoods at stake, and therefore signed in blood of something or other. So let's try a little bit of writing. Lovely. Panda. Seeks. Jinxed. Zebra. For quick game of whist. Excellent ink flow. Very satisfying, consistent line that this lays down. Consistent and even line. Doesn't, it's very hard to do anything untoward with when you're using this pen. It's kind of hard little nib, obviously, nail-like. It's like you're sort of hammering the page, it's like you're gonna hang a picture on the page. So it's, it's certainly not got any flex to it, but when you've got such a smooth and consistent ink flow, unwieldy, but impressive. Oh, I should add this paper I'm using is Ink House that came with my beautiful new Opus 88, which I shall be reviewing in the very near future. If you've enjoyed this review, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the Panda Pen Club YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.